Hi, I'm Morgan McNaughton. And I'm Sam Langan. And welcome to Rotary Youth Exchange. A terrific organization to promote better understanding and goodwill of foreign cultures. As you can see, we both just got back from our exchanges. And they were great. When I arrived in my host country, I didn't know what to think. But I was ready to get started. So let's get started. It's important to remember that you're representing your country, your family back home, and Rotary Youth Exchange during your trip. Because of this, Rotary has what seems like a ton of rules and regulations. But you know what? They work. Let's go through them now. Whatever country you're in, try to understand the way of life. Study and discuss its problems in order to get the most out of the program. Don't be afraid to discuss social customs with your host family or your friends. You will soon learn their way of life and come to accept its different customs and traditions. Okay, so the first rules for the exchange are called the four D's. We'll get them out of the way first. The first D is drinking. There's no drinking allowed while on exchange. Your friends may invite you to a party or even offer you a drink, but don't do it. Politely say no thank you and call your family to take you home. The police could come to this party and you could be arrested for being there. You have to ask yourself if a drink is worth the cost of your exchange. However, your family may ask you to have a small drink as a family custom or tradition. That's okay. If you don't want to drink, politely say no thank you. Second D, drugs. They are strictly forbidden unless prescribed by a doctor. If someone offers you drugs, just say no thanks and walk away. Any violation of this rule will cause your immediate termination in the program and you'll be sent home. You could also risk being arrested and put in jail. The third D is driving. The rules of the exchange program prohibit you from driving any type of motorized vehicle while on exchange. This includes cars, motorcycles, tractors, motorboats, and any similar type of vehicle. The reason for this is your safety. There are lots of legal and insurance issues which can arise if a student is involved in an accident. This rule is strictly enforced and any violation may result in being sent home immediately. The fourth D is dating. Romantic attachments are not allowed during this exchange. Don't take this wrong, we're not against dating. We just want you to have a lot of friends and not get too attached to one person. This can also avoid heartbreak at the program's completion. There's also another D, don't do dumb things. That's right, things like smoking, getting tattoos, not attending school, downloading pornography, and independent travel. Don't smoke. If you said that you didn't smoke on your application, don't smoke while on your exchange. Don't get any tattoos or body piercings. The guideline is you go home as you came. Don't travel independently. Even if you just want to visit relatives a few hours away, independent travel is prohibited. If you insist on taking a trip by yourself, the only place you'll end up is back home. Now let's talk about school and how to fit in. All students are expected to attend school. It is important to understand that this is an educational exchange, not a vacation. Rules are different from school to school, and exchange students are expected to conform to local custom. Beards, mustaches, and long hair for boys and heavy makeup for girls might not be allowed. The teachers and principals at your school will expect considerable respect from exchange students. They know your classes may be hard at first, but they expect you to try your best and do homework assignments just like your classmates. You'll find that if you try, teachers and friends will help you. The goal of this exchange is not just school, but to give you a better understanding of the culture too. Being homesick is a common and natural part of the exchange, especially at the beginning. Even so, frequent emails and phone calls to your family and friends can make you more homesick. Limit emails and instant messaging to about 30 minutes per day. Phone calls to once a month. 
Think about it this way. The more you're on the internet or phone talking to your friends overseas, the longer it'll take you to learn the language and culture of your new home. Spending too much time talking to people back home could prevent you from making more friends and your host family is waiting to interact with you. One of the things that I found that helped me to fit in at each family was to offer help in the kitchen at dinner time. It gave me a chance to talk to my host mom and tell her about my day at school. Along the same lines, I had time to talk to my host dad as I helped him change the oil. You'd be surprised how much you can learn about your host families and their cultures with just these little conversations. You may be asked to attend a religious service. See this as an opportunity to experience some more of the culture. If you feel uncomfortable with this, talk to your counselor. No matter what, try to become part of the family. It's not unusual for a student to have three or four different host families throughout the course of this program. This will allow you to discover new ways of life and different families' values and traditions. You may or may not have your own room, but you should show appreciation to the family for allowing you into their homes and lives. By now, you've learned a lot about interacting with your host family, and we hope all your experiences with them are great. Still, there may be times when you feel like you don't fit in with the family. If you are experiencing a problem, discuss it with your host family first. If things aren't better after a few days, talk to your counselor. You should never speak negatively to your friends or other exchange students about any of your host families, even in chat rooms or blogs. You'll be appointed a Rotary Counselor on your exchange. Your counselor will probably want to meet with you two or three times a month outside Rotary meetings. Get to know your counselor well. They're there to help you with school, finances, personal problems, and any other issues that come up. As part of the program, you are required to bring an emergency fund with you as specified by your host Rotary District. Typically, this is between 250 and 500 US dollars. The purpose of this money is to cover any emergencies that may arise, as well as the cost of major events like travel. The fund is not meant to be used for day-to-day -day costs, and if needed, your parents will be responsible for replenishing it during the course of the program. The district committee will arrange several meetings for you to travel and meet other exchange students. Attendance at some of these events is considered mandatory. Another option for travel is to enroll in the Rotary approved bus excursion. Before you sign up for this outing, you need permission from your host club and your parents. Contact your counselor for more information. On a more serious note, we have to talk to you about a topic that will most likely never happen on your exchange. Sexual abuse. If you think you've been sexually abused, tell somebody, like your counselor or a district chair. If nothing happens, keep telling them. Make them understand you're serious. Your district will provide you with an official list of people to contact if you feel you've been sexually abused. Here are a few definitions that you need to know. Sexual abuse. This includes forcing or encouraging someone, regardless of age or gender, to engage in implicit or explicit sexual acts alone or with another person. Sexual abuse examples are varied and range from strong physical offenses to indecent exposure or expecting a student to look at sexual or pornographic material. Sexual harassment, not as severe as abuse, refers to sexual advances requests for favors or verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nature. Harassment is often a technique used by sexual predators to desensitize or groom their victims for abuse. Examples of sexual harassment range from sexually explicit jokes to physically touching or brushing. While at the museum with his exchange student, Mr. Smith spent an unusual amount of time taking Sharita around to see sexually suggestive objects. When Jose got ready for bed, Mrs. Jones would stop by his room, leer in, and she would give a suggestive sound, hinting he was very sexy. After watching an R-rated movie together, 
The obscene language or gestures in it are repeated over and over for no good reason. An individual continually comments and gloats on his or her sexual activity and prowess. Sexually suggestive comments that are not appreciated are given out on a regular basis. Under no circumstances should you arrange travel plans for yourself or seek concessions and expect your host club to agree. Independent, unaccompanied travel is not allowed. Rotary approved travel might include school or church trips and vacations with your host family. In these situations, you may need written parental authority from home to the satisfaction of your district youth exchange chair, your host parents and host Rotary Club approval of the trip and the proposed travel itinerary, permission of the school principal if the trip takes place during the school term. If traveling by car, it must be with a Rotary family or a Rotary approved family. Overnight accommodation must be provided by Rotarians at each stopover. Remember, long distance travel by yourself in buses or trains is not permitted. Students are only permitted to fly by registered commercial airline. Flights and private aircraft are not allowed in view of possible insurance complications. During your exchange, you should always remember that you are a personal representative of your country, your family, and Rotary. Always strive to maintain a high standard of behavior, and keep in mind that the way you conduct yourself will often determine whether your host club, your host family, or your school will accommodate other Rotary students in the future. Refrain from smoking when wearing a Rotary blazer, or in public places with Rotary affiliations. During your stay, you'll be expected to speak to a number of Rotarians, school groups, or community organizations. Make sure to come well prepared with information about your family, your hometown, your country, and of course, dress presentably. Occasionally, you'll be asked to give interviews for newspapers, TV, and radio. It's extremely important that you watch your remarks to avoid causing any unintentional embarrassment or to hurt Rotary, yourself, or your families. You'll be required to send regular reports to your sponsor and host club and district, as well as to your local district committee. It's very important that these reports are submitted in a timely manner, and it's your responsibility to know the schedule for when they're due. You should also remember to write your parents and friends back home on a regular basis. They'll be excited to hear about what you've been up to and what new experiences you're having. During the first night with your host family, you'll want to ask some basic questions. The first night questionnaire is perfect for getting to know your family. Some general issues to address include what you should call your host parents, what chores you're expected to do daily, when it's convenient for you to use the shower or bath, and if you're responsible for purchasing your bathroom toiletries. Here are a few testimonials from students who have been a part of our program. Exchange student experience is a, uh, it's a great thing. You know, maybe I couldn't make a friend, you know, like I couldn't learn anything, but I learned about not to be shy. Go around, see different things, try everything, from a different culture. As you getting to know country better, as you getting to know language better, you gain friends, you gain experience, you gain, you gain knowledge, everything. I made a lot of friends, not just American, mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, I made a lot of exchange students too. Mm -hmm. So from Italy and Taiwan, Chinese, and so I can go to, I can visit them anytime, you know, just, just a supply, so you yeah. know, the host me. Uh, my host family is the kindest persons in the world. They became to me like a second family. I, I get to know them uh, better, uh, they get to know me better and like look and I made so many friends. I have like a lot of friends. It's just crazy. Everybody knows me in the school. I don't even know everybody but everybody knows me. In the hallway people just wave at me and say hey Caroline and I'm like Hey, you, I don't know your name, but hey. I'm sure uh, English and this all uh, 
exchange uh, experience will help me in future so much and give me opportunity to work, to get a better job and um, to just uh, get ahead in my life. We hope you've enjoyed hearing about Rotary Youth Exchange. Even though everyone is different and each experience is unique to you and your circumstances, there are a few things to keep in mind that will make any situation a more enriching experience. Try to immerse yourself in the customs and culture of your host country to learn the language quickly, if it's different from your own. And involve yourself wholeheartedly in your school, community, and Rotary activities. Your compliance with these rules and guidelines will assure you a successful and rewarding experience. So good luck! And have fun!